Hey everybody, it's your good buddy Thorn, and uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's just get started, shall we? All right, so <laughs> winter is almost over. Um, it's almost the first of April already, and uh, we've been pretty busy here at uh, LARP on the Borderlands, and we got a lot of stuff to cover that we've kind of collected over the few months of winter. And so I want to talk to you about quite a few products, and uh, hopefully this week we'll get two or three different videos out. Um, for some impressions videos and some equipment videos and that kind of stuff. So, but let's just dive right into what we're going to work on or look at uh, today, okay? Uh, it's all of this stuff, uh, and there's a lot of it, and um, it, it's a pretty cool stuff. So, what we're going to start with is some of the the least um, common. Let's talk about least common stuff. Now, you know what? Let's talk about footwear. You know, <laughs> I talk about footwear all the time, and um, and it because it, it, it's important. It really is. And and normally I'll wear turn shoes or um, or combat boots or, or a boot of some kind uh, to do larping in. And we've got uh, well, I guess we really got like four different pair of shoes to take a look at today. So let's just, let's really just jump into the shoes, and 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 we'll see what we got. Okay. All right, so the first pair that I want to talk about, uh, Jarvis found on Wish, um, which is a Chinese company online that, that manufactures a bunch of stuff. Um, and some of it's pretty good, and some of it you kind of go, eh, well, I don't know, but all right. So the first thing that we got off of Wish, and we're, we're trying to put together this, this orc costume, if you remember us talking about it, and, and you'll see that in the next month or two. Um, and we really want to talk about boots for them, and uh, my my Walmart special boots are pretty good, and I think I'll probably use those quite a bit with some with some fur added to it and all kinds of weird stuff. But we found these boots online, and uh, <laughs> they are um, they're about thirty eight dollars. Uh, they got little skull buckles on them. They're high tops and they're just kind of orky looking boots we're going to add some some fur to the top we're going to add some other parts to them uh they got a good nice lug sole to them they're pretty comfortable and uh they do have a zipper on them and i'm not really i'm not really keen on the zipper but for 38 dollars it took a couple weeks to get here we're going to try them out we're going to break them in we'll probably break them on the field but we'll have a good time doing it okay so for an orc look yeah, all right. We'll try them out and see what they do. Uh, that's Wish for about $38 to $40. And, uh, yeah, they're all right. Yeah, we'll give them a shot, okay? And uh, they fit pretty good. I've worn them out a couple times. Uh, wore them out in the snow. Uh, they're pretty warm. They're pretty comfortable. Uh, I haven't done any LARPing with them yet, but we'll see how that goes, okay? Now the second pair of shoes that I got, I also got from Wish, and um, Jarvis found them again, and uh, they are a medieval pair of shoes, medieval pair of, they're not really turn shoes, they are um, a little later period, but they're pretty nice, they've got a, uh, a plastic sole to them, um, they actually sent me a size 43 rather than the 44, uh, and that could have been my fault. I might have ordered the wrong size. Uh, and I think these were $20, $25 maybe on Wish. And uh, they lace up on the sides, and uh, they're pretty nice, comfortable shoes. Um, they're more realistic, historically accurate, than uh, a lot of the shoes that you see in reenacting. And for wearing around camp, wearing to the ball or wearing into the tavern, they're pretty nice. Um, they fit pretty good, even if they're 43s and I wear a 44, uh, European styling. And they're pretty nice. Uh, they're all right. So that's what I'm going to wear for the rest of this video. 
I probably should have tied the outer side first, huh? And, uh, well, they don't look too bad. Look pretty good. Okay. When you take a look at them, you're going to go, why on earth, Thorwald, did you buy these shoes? Uh, these are size 10s. They are Tudor uh, style or time period. And they are kind of, um, to lack of a better name, a cow shoe, right? This is a very Landskriegs uh, type of shoe. But this is the later period Tudor uh, civilian model. But it's really the only Lons Creek shoe that I could find because uh, I have some other stuff that I want to show you. And uh, these are very nice, good leather sole, and they cost $80. That's it, $80 for good leather shoes. They do make other shoes. They make turn shoes. They make Roman boots. They make Tudor boots. They make medieval boots. They make a lot of really nice stuff. They also make pouches. Um, and uh, this is their Tudor kidney pouch. And uh, here's a placard, Bahom, online. Everything that they have on their website is in stock. This came into me. Uh, this and the boots came to me within about um, five days, which is pretty darn good, really. Uh, nice leather, well put together. And it's going to be a nice little addition to our pouch collection, I think. Okay. So, but our medieval boots and our medieval shoes, um, like right now, I'm, I've got my uh, I've got my Scandinavian gear on. Uh, so let's get away from the shoes for a minute and look at something else. Okay. All right. All right. So the next thing I want to take a look at. Um, and this goes towards our Norse personality again, is a spear. Spears were very common for the time period. Um, in fact, I don't know why more people don't carry them other than they're kind of hard to, they're kind of hard to control. And a, a lot of games will make you use these in two hands rather than one hand, which um, was typical. This is more or less a hunting spear. If you remember that spear way back in the day, I was showing you um, my cold steel spear, which is about eh, about that tall, I guess. Um, this is right at six foot. This goes into the max we weapons length uh, for most LARPs. It's got this nice lugged hunting head to it, um, all nice and sharp, or, or nice and soft, I'm sorry. Um, this is Epic Armory's uh, Norse spear okay um handle all the way down got a good sized handle i really like the feel of this uh i kind of wish it was a little longer but on the other hand i understand why it's not um people just have a hard problem with this being used one-handed with a spear like it should be uh it's it's a, it, i think it's a safety and control issue and, and really it's kind of sad but uh, I know that at LARP on the Borderlands, we're looking at using them one-handed with a shield. Um, and then we'll probably do some other stuff too. So, But that's going to be on our summer game, and we'll talk about that in another video. All right? So what else do I got to show you? I really, um, the big two-hander we talked about, I did a short video on. And uh, it is so big that I can't get it into the camera inside at all. I can't really mess with it inside because it is too big. Um, but we're going to do a little bit more close-up work with the the handle. Oops! <laughs> Hit the top fan. Um, like I said, <laughs> this is very very flexible. 
So you don't have to really worry about it hurting anybody if you're getting close. And the handle is nice and long, so you can use it historically. And uh, definitely a two-handed weapon. Um, and uh, it's just nice. It's just nicely put together. And I can't wait to use this out in the field this summer, or this spring actually, I think we'll be taking it out in May. Uh, Alliance LARP is doing their national in uh, Colorado. And I know Joris and I are planning on going down. We'll probably go down as brother I know our brother Joris. Uh, we might not go down as the Lons Creeks, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. So let's put it this way. Um, and uh, really, um, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit more about clothing today, too. Uh, we took a look at the boots, and we took a look at the shoes, and that's really cool stuff. Uh, the next parts that I want to talk to you about is clothing. And we've, we've collected a little bit of stuff, and I want to show you, okay? The first thing I want to show you is from Mytholin. And uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful uh, robe, tunic. Damascus. Uh, this is their Stefan tunic, Damascus, and it is a green tunic, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it is very long, and um, just just a beautiful piece. It really is nice. And you're probably looking at me, going, "Well, what would you ever wear this for?" This this is the kind of thing that you wear for a, a, an event. Um, like this last summer we had our, our, I'm sorry, this last winter, Alliance Lark Denver had their winter ball. And this is definitely something that you would have worn for that. It is very, very nice and it just has a great look to it. Um, well, very well made and, uh, and I will show you this in an upcoming video. Okay? Uh, highly recommend it. News about Mytholin is um, I got a message from, oh, who the heck was it? Stefan, I guess it was, um, at Methalon. They are no longer selling retail or wholesale to the United States. Uh, well, that's not quite true. They're selling wholesale to one distributor in the United States right now. Uh, they're stopped doing retail. You can't directly order from them, which is sad. Uh, they have some very, very nice stuff. Shipping's a little high because they are shipping it from Germany. Um, and, and so, as they said in an email to me, we are going to not do retail to the United States anymore because it is too expensive for you, the customer. What we're going to do is provide um, all of our line through uh, medieval collectibles. Uh, and I'm, I, I like medieval collectibles. I, I order from them sometimes. They are like the sister website to Dark Knight Armory. But um, there's a lot of times that their stuff is, is gone, it, out of stock, and you gotta wait. And it, it, it's kind of annoying, but I kinda understand it, so. All right, with that said, I wanna take a look at um, some clothing items, one from Epic Armory, and one from uh, Mythala. And it's gonna be their Lange Krieg. Well, style, Lange Krieg style. Lons Creek style is, is 15, 16, 1700s. Kind of voluminous uh, jacket uh, and either hose or, or wide trousers. A lot of their clothing was slashed, it's very extravagant. Most of these guys were mercenaries, either German or Swiss, and <laughs> pretty flamboyant guys, okay? Uh, both Epic Armory and Mythalin make uh, a Lons Creek set of clothing in a style, okay? The first one I want to take a look at is Epic Armory. And hey, give me one second. So, Epic Armory is the first one I'm going to talk to you about. And uh, this is their shirt. And I've done some modification on the sleeve when I first started doing the video. Well, actually, before I started doing videos, I started working on this to make it look a little more historic. Now, the shirt itself, uh, let me preface to say this conversation with a statement from Brother Juris, who said, Thorne, we are doing LARP, we're not doing historic reenacting. 
it isn't going to be exact because it's not supposed to be. You need to relax. That said, Landskriegs didn't wear this kind of crap. Okay, this would have been a jacket thrown over a shirt with slash sleeves to throw this deal. Okay, I will let that go for the moment <laughs> because we are doing LARP, not reenacted. So, with this said, this is pretty cool. I really like it. Now, I, I try to make this a little billowy. This is why it's sewn here. Um, and you saw the pants that I wore in the last video with the with the sword, and um, it's nice. I like it. It's but it's not Lanskrieg. But I'm I'm letting that go. I'm letting it go, brother Joris. I'm letting it go. It's nicely made. It's good quality product. Uh, what I like about it, it's got button sleeves. The sleeves are very nice. Look at these. Look at these buttons. These are very nice. Um, and it's just it, it comes in various colors. It, it's mono or uh, uh, dual dual colored, white and green, white and black, red and, uh, and several different colors. And it's nice. And they make a trousers for it too. Now the trousers, which you saw me wear the other day, these are full length trousers though, um, and they're pretty. They're okay. It's your basic pattern. Uh, I really like the fly with the buttons, and uh, you know what? Oh, hi, Hobbs. You know what? Let me put them on and show you what they look like, okay? Okay. I'll so here I am back um, wearing this stuff, and like I said, this is a nice look. It really, it, it, it's pretty good. I like the trousers; they're nice and billowy. Um, eh, except for it should be. Well, all right. I'm gonna let that go. Historically, I'm gonna let it go. Um, they're they're fine. Now, if we're talking lawn skirts, yeah, let's go back to let's go back to feeties, right? So I wear my socks, and I really need some boots to wear. And I did get another pair of riding boots this year. My other ones finally got out. I got these. Um, actually, I guess I got these off of Amazon for about 125. These are the high top engineer riding boots, and good lug soles. And um, so I will be using these for LARPing as well as motorcycle riding because they look all right and they're comfortable. And with this outfit, if I can do this, you know what, I gotta sit down because you don't want to see me fall on camera, do you? No. So, <laughs> wearing these boots, that looks pretty good. Looks okay. But uh, historically, Historically, <laughs> historically, Lance Creek was either a pikeman, a halberder, uh, or at times wore or carried the, the big uh, two-hander. Uh, it was called a doppel soldier. He got paid double, and, and that's kind of what it was. There was other stuff that he had um, as well. He could wear armor. He could not wear any armor. He could wear full armor. Okay, so looking to put in this and going, all right, well, what kind of armor would he wear? We're talking late 15, 1600s. What am I going to look for? Um, the breastplates and falls and tacits that I have would work with this, right? My uh, conquistador breastplate would be a little later, but it would be fine too. And Epic Armory makes a what they call the mercenary breastplate. And uh, so I thought, okay, yeah, that'll work good. And it has built in, or it has tassels you can buy to put into them or lace into them. And I thought, yeah, this would be really good. And so I did get a set of mercenary armor. And I, I, I like it. Uh, this just came out of the bag. I still got to take some of the plastic off of this. Uh, they put plastic and really oiled this up. And But it's a nice. It's a nice basic breastplate. It's got a leather back piece to it, which is fine. Um, buckles on the sides is great. And it has these lugs on the bottom, or ravans, to um, lace the tassets into. And uh, wearing it, fits pretty good. And like I said, I'm a pretty good sized guy. 
So, uh, yeah, this works. It works. This works pretty good as a mercenary uh, breastplate, which is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, put my hat back on. So, uh, this is a pretty good look. I like it. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on this. The straps, I just got this in. Yeah, gives you pretty good armor protection. It, it's nice and movable, and it, it, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, also, uh, Epic Armory makes a uh, male uh, mantle, an imperial mantle, which I think I'll pick up for this look too, because uh, they very traditionally wore male uh, a mantle, or protect the throat, protect the shoulders, and that's it either with this or without it okay so yeah I'm kind of liking the look now let's see I gotta give me a second dig through all the other stuff that I have here that I wanted to take a look at this is what I'm looking for not stockings well hmm. I guess it's not around here um, but a lot of times what they wore with this, uh, instead of a full uh, burgonet, it is the uh, small helm or the secret helm. And uh, <laughs> get my hair all messy up. And so, we can wear this and we can strap our hat to the top of it. And uh, we got a pretty good historic look going right now. This looks is pretty good. I mean, you got head protection, you've got front protection. I don't have leg protection. <laughs> this is why you got to tie the hat in, kids. I don't have leg protection yet, but Epic Armor makes a set of tassets for this, and so I got those too. And let me grab them for you, and we'll take a look at them. I'm gonna take this off, but you got the you kind of got the idea, right? So. And once again, I haven't taken all the plastic off of these yet, but they come and they're nicely greased, nicely oiled, and take all the plastic off. And, um, and what you can see is a set of tassets, right? And they've got holes for where the lugs go into, but they don't actually fit. I've looked at the pictures they have online, and if this is the way it sits, then this needs to be about in the center, which is here, and then there's no way for it to fit. But if this is the center, and here's our center lugs, once again, it doesn't sit. It doesn't fit. And this is... Um, this is the kind of crap that just pisses me off. And these are these are these are pretty expensive. Uh, it's light enough. It's light enough metal that I can bend it to get it into shape. But no matter what I do, the holes cut in this leather or cut cut in this metal piece will not fit into these lugs at all. So instead of sending all this back and saying your product sucks. My solution to this is I'm going to add a leather uh, lame, and a lame is a metal p or a piece below the breastplate uh, that attaches into the tassets, which this would be the lame. But I'm going to add a leather leather piece to that, and then attach this to that leather piece so it'll hang a little lower and actually fit right. And I'll probably cut this down and bend this corner over with a hammer. So. Um, Nicely made, just not terribly pleased with the product, okay? Uh, let me show you this other thing. Be right back. All right. I kind of took the armor off uh, to show you this next stuff, okay? Now, this is Mytholin, and this is their version of the Mons Creek. Um, very similar to the uh, uh, Epic Armory stuff. Different colors. A little different take on it and uh, this is the jacket or shirt it's not really a jacket don't get me started 
but it has these nice button front and uh, nice sleeves. And the sleeves do billow quite a bit, and, uh, and they're nicely slashed with contrasting color. And it is, it is a little heavier fabric. This is what I would consider part like a, a nice work shirt fabric. This is kind of jackety um, canvas, kind of a lighter canvas um, jacket material. So um, <laughs> once I get into this, this is turning into a jacket. I'm going to split the front, put buttons on the front, put a yoke collar onto this to make it look more Landskriegy, and then I'll be happy with it for the most part. All right. Love it. It's great. I uh, love the colors. I like it just like this. And uh, I think you could probably mix and match these sets together and have a pretty good look to it. That's the jacket. Their pants are actually breeches with a mock cod piece, which I, I love so much. And a tie string waist. It does not have belt loops, neither does this. Um, and I will probably be adding belt loops to both sets of trousers. Because I do, I like this look. It really looks pretty cool. So let me put this stuff on and let me show you what it looks like. All right, give me a minute. All right, so here's the um, Lethalin stuff all on. Uh, I did put the waist belt on. I do have the wet the pouch on uh, for Bohem. And as you can see, I'm wearing my cow shoes. And in the background, you can hear uh, our Siamese cat, Cinnamon, who is angry with us for some reason like all Siamese cats are. However, you see the shoes from Boham. They are interesting to walk in. Uh, they're fairly comfortable. It's going to take a little bit to get used to them because you can't walk like, like you would in normal shoes. But I really, really like this. This is uh, the fake cod piece. The only thing that I don't like, and it, it, it goes to that historic issue again, this should really should be a wam or a jacket with a yoke collar and a white shirt underneath it. Cinnamon! Do you hear it? Let me go check on this cinnamon. Okay, took care of the cat. Sorry. Alright, so like I said, uh, cow shoes are interesting to wear. They're not uncomfortable. It's just, um, I can't, can't explain it to you. It's, it's just really kind of your toes are covered rather than the whole end step. So it's, 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 inter it's interesting to walk in them. Uh, if I was doing historic reenacting, re yeah, then I would probably do this. I will probably wear these when I'm not trying to fight. Although it would be interesting to fight with these, it really, really would. But, I like it. Like I said, some minor modifications are going to be done to this. I'm going to turn this into a jacket, wear it over a white shirt. Uh, the coloring is great. And it gives you that billowous, billowous look, I think, that uh, if you're doing trying to do Lons Creek, you're really looking to do. A little more expensive than the Epic Armory stuff. But uh, it looks a little better. Uh, this does cut the Epic Armory stuff doesn't come in other colors. It's a little cheaper. It's a little lighter. It, it's fine. It looks good. I've got both. I'll probably wear both on various occasions. Now, now that I've got all this crap on, let me show you something else that I picked up this winter to kind of go with this outfit. I already got the I already got the two-handed sword. I've already got the halberd, and I've already got my pike or my spear. So the next piece of sword, uh, the next piece that we're looking to get is probably a sword. Now, I've already got my Kretzer dagger, and uh, the handle does match the, uh, the Zweihander very, very well. Um, but a Landskrieg often carried a short sword, or a Katzenberg, uh, with a very unique style. This kind of handle and a very shorter blade. Um, and, just like Kalamazoo makes the great hand or the two-handed sword, the Kretzer dagger, they also make the Kretzer sword. Now, this does have the same style grip, same style grip um, that the the dagger goes for. I can put the ring back on the dagger if I wanted to. It does have the good ring. It's got about a 22-inch blade and a nice nice handle and uh, good hand protection. Now these swords were generally worn horizontal across the body thusly. Um, illustrations show them in a sheath or on a metal ring and that's kind of the look that I'm trying to replicate. I like this sword. It's nice. 
It's got a nice bend to it. It's short. Uh, it is a backup weapon to either uh, the halberd or the spear or pike. If I'm carrying the Zweihander, I'm probably not carrying this too. I probably just got the dagger. Now, to recreate that um, ring scabbard, I'm using one of my old Taekwondo belts. Knotting the ring in. And uh, there's talk on uh, Armory Archive of exactly how to mount and, and do the bow. Because um, it's a very extravagant bow in the illustrations that the Germans are wearing, the Germans and the Swiss mercenaries are doing. And like a nine foot um, sash. Uh, this will work for now. And it's got the ring. Once you put the sword in, it's not too bad. Sentiment. So, so with the armor on, the outfit looks pretty good. And we can just tie the belt over the top of this. And once we get the lames and the uh, tassets on this, this will look pretty nice. And really we could go with a red sash maybe. Or something similar to that. And, uh, yeah. Epic Armory Hidden Helmet. Hey, you know what? I think we're about done. Um... What haven't I talked to you about? Oh, there's two things that I haven't talked to you about. I have almost forgot that. You know, this is not going to stay on there until I tie it on. Uh, both Epic Armory items. One is a, as they call their Einar belt. This is a Viking belt. It's got a nice little um, dragon buckle and some nice little uh, belt attachments. And it's got a cool little tongue. So that's not very expensive. It's, if you need a good belt, this goes well with your Norse personality. Uh, and actually, you could probably wear this up into the 14th. And you could actually probably wear it with this and get away with it without too much work. And the Epic Armory. Uh, some of their other stuff is this nice little cleaver. Uh, one of the NPCs I do is a butcher. Well, actually, I guess this is Kalamazil. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so he is an NPC butcher, doesn't normally carry a weapon, but he would definitely carry a cleaver. So, highly recommend this too. Nice flexible foam all the way through, good solid handle. And uh, you know what? I think that might be all the stuff that I have to talk about today. It's, it's been a while since I've talked to you and, and I kind of missed you guys, but uh, winter is kind of a hard time to do get anything done around here. So. Until the next time, which will probably be next week, uh, we'll kind of try to get outside and get a couple of these impressions outside to get a look at. Um, and definitely take a look at the, the bigger spear. So, that said, welcome to spring. Welcome to another season of adventuring. If you're just joining the channel, go back, watch some of the other stuff. you see where we came from. We're going to continue on this summer. Uh, this month, uh, we're pretty much done with. April, we're looking to get out and do an event on our own. May, we're looking to go down to Colorado. And June is our, our uh, experimental game. And then July and August, September, we haven't got on the calendar yet, so we'll see what's going to happen. But this is Thorne, and for Brother Einar, me, and Brother Joris, who's at work, we'll see you next time, all right? Thanks for watching. Um...